So what is architecture? So I think uh, in a way architecture is uh, the capacity of asking what is architecture. Because uh, I was thinking actually that you would never ask what is medicine or what is uh, being a lawyer. Uh, and architecture has this uh, ability to open up questions, actually, and to allow you to uh, to question all the time as a profession, uh, what is what are you doing and what is architecture? And it's also questioning in a critical way uh, the environment, uh, the dynamics of it, and finding a kind of a structured uh, spatial concept construct that is able at the same time to question and at the same time to regenerate the environment itself. Um, so this faculty is uh, crucial, I think, uh, for an architect and it's a way of thinking and you would never actually see an architect uh, that is, or a successful architect that is dis detached from his or her profession. It's really like a, a way of seeing the world. You dream uh, about architecture, you live with architecture and it allows you, uh, it draws you all the time uh, with it. And what can architecture do? Um, I think architecture can do you good in a way. Uh, it's something that transports you, that is able to take you into a different realm, uh, that, uh, that has a very a, like, uh, a big capacity to re-solicit your humaneness and your relationship to the environment. Um, I think also it can open up uh, a different uh, interrelationship between the people. So it's really about uh, creating or uh, orchestrating interrelations uh, and looking at uh, what is not seen, what is invisible, and recreating a visible realm uh, to it. Uh, I think also that it requires at the same time a knowledge and a know-how. Knowledge because uh, being an architect you have to have uh, an open knowledge, an open curiosity towards different disciplines and being uh, uh, and the know-how because you are working with uh, something very material and very uh, like uh, tangible so you have to have the know-how of how to put that uh, into space. It is also, uh, it can allow you to resist. It's an act of resistance in a way, resistance to trend, uh, resistance to, uh, to pre-established uh, orders, uh, resistance to e exclusion, and allows you to reconfigure these if you have the knowledge and the capacity of the know-how to reconfigure these into a different, more balanced way. Sometimes, like I think, like of course, architects are not solving the world. We are not saviors of the world, and we tend to think that. Uh, but uh, I think we are able to recreate new situations, and some part, sometimes they can be also uh, embattered, embattered situations, situations that are special situations that allow a better environment and relink uh, oneself to the environment. Because through you rethinking of how you can um, do architecture, uh, what's the process of making architecture, it uh, can allow you actually to, to do things uh, more, uh, probably more environmentally, more uh, sensitive to the, to the context. One of the examples, for example, like one of the projects is our Estonian National Museum and the fact of questioning the environment and uh, looking at this trace that exists on the site and reappropriating it, which is uh, like uh, also uh, re-looking re at what was residual and uh, thinking that it is an opportunity. So that that is also a capacity of, through questioning your environment, you're able also to provide a new way of uh, constructing. Or, for example, the project that I was leading for uh, Reinventer Paris, the uh, Masséna Tower in Paris, it's also, it leads you into a different way of producing architecture through uh, a much bigger multidisciplinary interaction in a way, and also through thinking in circular manners, that you're not thinking in a linear process, but you're thinking how you're producing architecture in a more circular manner, that it will always be uh, about uh, re, uh, uh, reusing things or uh, starting from a point and, or for example, once you consume uh, terrain, uh, you build on a land, uh, you're responsible to rethink how you give 
back to the land itself. So it's it's a different. I think it's it's so uh, crucial to rethink uh, the process in a different way today of architecture. And what is your architectural position? Uh, my architecture position uh, is, um, I think, in a way, emphatic. Uh, it's uh, the fact, uh, as an architect, to be able to project into the others. Because uh, architecture, in a, in a way, it's an extremely subjective uh, uh, profession uh, on one side, because it really is uh, more and more, um, uh, I discovered that it's really linked to the person, uh, in a way, to the architect, because it's about what you lived, uh, how what was your childhood? How do you how did you like how did you inter relate to space and to to the city and all these uh, kind of accumulation of memories of deep memories and the accumulation of knowledge that you you have throughout time make in a way your your uh, way of looking at the environment and uh, one has always to kind of ask what are the what are the things that produces uh, spaces around us and then through all this kind of critical thinking and knowledge you reconstruct uh, new, like a new environment but at the same time uh, it's extreme subjectivity and extreme objectivity in a way too because it has a the possibility also to live alone in a, like in an environment architecture has to have uh, to have the possibility to open a very subjective realm into a very objective one and very open one where everyone can reappropriate what you have imagined and what you have imagined in a very informed and large way um, so in a sense, uh, this is like uh, allows you or like obliges you as an architect to have an emphatic position where you're able to project into the others, uh, uh, like uh, personalities or the other, the users, the, the client, uh, the the team to to have all these uh, thought about and work with and find the tools basically to work with the the, the different actors uh, to reorchestrate. Uh, a kind of uh, uh, just space in a way, or like the the right uh, or the unexpectedly evident uh, project that has to be in a certain specific uh, place. Are there maybe certain architects or theorists that uh, interested you in the past, or that you come from? Maybe teachers, or <laughs> you worked for Jean Nouvel? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Something. I think, uh, of course, uh, like uh, it's the accumulation of uh, all of these, uh, like uh, readings and uh, and personalities and people uh, that one encounter as an architect. So it's uh, uh, and somehow I try to draw my own critical thinking and my own line uh, of uh, of production uh, in relation to that. Um, I think I was also very much interested in non-architects, like all like what is not architecture, and uh, like for example, uh, either anthropology, geography, and uh, what what produces uh, today, uh, what 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 are the the dynamics that produce architecture? Because once. When you want to intervene in a space, you have to know uh, why are you doing that actually, and how you are doing that, and why at say a specific moment you're building a museum, and what does a museum mean today in the 21st century? Uh, and to know that, you, you have to be curious to uh, to understand the geopolitics. You have to un be curious to understand geography, uh, to understand uh, sociology, to understand uh, human. Uh, you know, human sciences. Um, so, so in a way, uh, I, I was really interested in all of these um, disciplines. And, and art, of course, because there is like this kind of uh, the untouchable uh, kind of uh, dimension to architecture that is essential. And somehow this uh, dimension proves that uh, we're like in mean, the scientific revolution or like the scientific reasoning uh, of our world, the rationalities are not enough actually. It's really like uh, uh, all today, like all our construct or all our uh, like field are based on the fact that uh, uh, that uh, you have the scientific rationality
rationale that has to govern uh, the way we produce things. But uh, there is this kind of rationality and this kind of um, uh, realm of beauty that exists and that is completely uh, uh, humane and uh, like links you to earth actually and it's so important. And uh, what is your design method? <laughs> Um, I wanted to be, before being architect, I wanted to be an uh, archaeologist actually. Um, and I think it, uh, today I realize that it's something that uh, influences the way uh, I produce uh, together with, like in the office, architecture. Like it's in a way a kind of a process of uh, archaeology and I call that, uh, like every time there is a project, I call it like the archaeology of the future because once you're thinking about uh, the production of architecture as an archaeological process, it allows you to think of it uh, not anymore as an object, uh, as an independent object that you're uh, making it uh, like just putting it on an environment, but you're thinking it uh, from within, actually, and you're thinking about uh, as if you are digging into uh, the site where you're building, and somehow through digging you discover stories, and you discover histories, and you discover material, like something that is extremely materialized and linked to earth and linked to, uh, to the traces. So it anchors you in a context, but anchors you also in a story, in a history. Of course, suddenly you find this kind of uh, discovery, and this is like uh, the the story makes sense, and it becomes uh, it becomes so ob obvious, and it's uh, at the same time it's a history or a story that is true because you belong belong it to the past, and at the same time it's extremely subjective because it's linked to the subject that uh, discovered this and reconstructed the things to create. <laughs> A new, uh, a new way. So talking about that, the method is really like uh, this kind of digging and searching and uh, and finding uh, this uh, wall of evolution where people would uh, like we would pin up uh, some kind of references, uh, relationships to the concept, questioning them and then evolving them through time, where different hands come and uh, you know intervene on that.